Hello. The main question we're getting in the office these days as pediatricians is, wow, my child is having a really hard time concentrating in school, doctor. Is this attention deficit disorder? Is it anxiety or is it something else? So that's the topic for today's video. My name is Dr. Noha Polak. I am a pediatrician where I've been practicing pediatrics for the last 25 years in Union City and Bayonne, New Jersey. And I'm very happy to be joined today by Dr. Narissa Bauer, who's a behavioral pediatrician. Hi, Dr. Polak. Thanks for having me with you. And as you said, I'm Dr. Narissa Bauer. I'm a behavioral pediatrician. I've been practicing for about 20 years and I'm in Carmel, Indiana. That's so great, great. So again, this is the question I'm getting, Dr. Bauer, and I wanted your help to try to answer this question for parents. If kids can't concentrate for a long time learning virtually, is it usually ADD, attention deficit, anxiety, or something else? What are your thoughts? Yeah, well, that's a, that's a great question. I hear that a lot too. So the one thing that I always tell parents, first of all, is that when we make a diagnosis of, of behavioral or mental health condition, I don't have an imaging study or a blood test. I can't swab their throat and say, ah, oh, it's this. What we rely on is parent, teacher, and child report. And one of the things that I know, given that we've li been living through COVID, is that parents have had the opportunity to see their child for the first time learning school from home. And obviously this has brought a lot of concerns about how they're paying attention, how they're learning. Um, and I will often tell parents, it can be really overwhelming to sort of put all of that data, all of your concerns, thoughts, and what you're seeing into something that you can then go to see Dr. Pollock for and talk to her in like 10 minutes, right? So um, I was actually a spokesperson for understood.org and uh, the American Academy of Pediatrics where we talked about uh, a principle that you can download and I'll share that uh, information with you, but it helps you put together all your thoughts and what you're seeing and all your concerns. So that way, when you only have a few minutes to chat with your doctor, you have, you're organized and you can really get to the, the matter because that's how we're gonna know what you're seeing. And we need you to tell us. So, you know, it can be ADHD, but it also might be something else. It might just be a child who's tired of sitting. Um, it could also be a child who has anxiety or a child with learning disabilities. Those are just a few of the things that I think about when I evaluate a child who comes in for the possibility of ADHD. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. But, you know, so this has got me thinking, um, obviously I have my own practice, but as a primary care physician, Dr. Polak, what should parents expect when they come see you when they bring their concerns about the possibility of ADHD? When a patient comes in with concerns about their child having issues with concentration, we can do a visit either by a virtual visit, which is, you know, remote from home, or we can do it in person. The parent can come in by themselves if they'd like to have a discussion alone or they can bring the child in. We will take a full history of how long this problem has been going on, as well as other um, concerns that might be you know, going on. If the child is there, I will do a physical exam. If lab work is necessary, we will also order that. In addition to that, I will give the parent questionnaires to fill out. Some of these questionnaires can be done in the office, and others I would advise that you take home and do with the help of another caregiver or with the help of a teacher. Because in my experience, sometimes it is ADD or attention deficit disorder. Sometimes it's anxiety or even depression. I've had some kids with depression have a real hard time concentrating. And that's really why I would like to have a long discussion with the parent and the child if they can about this issue. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. It, there are so many things that can look like ADHD and not be it. Um, what I tell parents is that you are able to see outside the behaviors of concern, but it's never really tells us the full story. So getting that uh, full history and talking specifically to the child can be really helpful in addition to getting those questionnaires. Exactly, yep, mm -hmm. exactly. So another really good question parents ask me is, well, how long does a normal child, how long can they actually pay attention? What do you think, Dr. Bauer? 
Yeah, so the good rule of thumb that I often will remind parents is to take the child's age and multiply that by two or three. So for instance, you have a five-year-old, the typical attention span then would be about 10 to 15 minutes. And then like, for instance, uh, an eight-year-old, like 16 to 24 minutes, right? Um, however, there's a lot of things that can influence a child's actual attention span, not just their age, but you know, um, their mood, what else is happening in the environment, uh, as well as what they're looking at, what they're engaging with, right? If they're interested in it, great. They can maybe hyper-focus even and just stay with it for a long time uh, or in the zone, right? And then if it's really boring or it's hard to understand, they may just quickly lose interest. So when I talk to parents about this, not only am I asking them questions like, well, how long are they seeming to engage, especially when we're talking about virtual learning, what else are they doing? What do they look like? Are they just kind of sitting there just or, or closing their eyes and maybe just pretending to listen? <laughs> um, or are they actually engaged and, and leaning forward and you know using the chat box, right? That interaction is so important. If you see your child just sitting there and you know not really excited, you know, you might want to nudge them and, and allow them to take a quick break. Another tip that I have for you really quickly is that I often use visual timers like this one. So I love these because kids um, might need a little motivation to stay on top of a task. So let's say they logged off of their Zoom for the class, but they still have work to do. And they're like, I don't wanna look at the screen anymore. Well, let them have a snack, let them get up and then negotiate with their child, well, look, why don't we set the timer for just 15 minutes? You see that? When it stops being read, that's when we're gonna have another quick break. We can do, get up, we can walk outside, we can ride the bike, but 15 minutes, it's not a long time. You can do it, let's go, right? So making things as fun, making it like a game, but using visual cues like this can help a child just hang in there a little bit longer to get the work done, especially if you're sitting there by their side. You're not doing it with them, but you're just there to just kind of coach them on and cheer them on. Just, oh my gosh, you only have five more minutes left. I know you can do it. That's so helpful. Wow, that's awesome, that's awesome. Yeah, another thing I like to talk to parents about when it comes to concentration and attention is sleep, because your yes. child, if they don't sleep well, they can't you know, really concentrate. So I really talk a lot about sleep. I'm hoping that, that you can keep your child on a schedule, a sleep schedule that doesn't vary too much on you know, weekends or holidays. So if you need to vary it a little bit, but not more but by more than an hour, um, so try to keep bedtime the same if possible within an hour, even on weekends, and try to have a routine, a calming routine that doesn't involve screens if you can, one that hopefully involves some cuddles, some reading of a book, something calming, and a really quiet environment. So in my opinion, sleep is super important for concentration. Would you agree? I agree. I agree. And that is such a simple thing to do is just to make sure everybody gets enough sleep, not just your child, but you. Yes, because, right? we all do that. Yes. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. So Dr. Bauer, what resources can we give to our patients um, you know, to help them figure out what's going on and to help them understand ADD if that's their diagnosis. Right, right. So in addition to the um, principle that I, I mentioned earlier from understood.org called Take Note, the other thing is that um, obviously families can go to my website, letstalkkidshealth.org, where I have a blog and I oftentimes put articles on there about ADHD or anxiety, depression, and I include a lot of one-page handouts if you liked to read that way and or share it with other people. On that website, I also have a course uh, called Teach Me ADHD, which is something that I designed um, last year. And it's for kids with ADHD eight to 12 to take with their parent so that together they can learn all about ADHD, how it affects them, how it affects their brain while having fun. There's a detective theme, families do family missions every week and they have to send pictures of evidence of their work to headquarters. Uh, and then they do daily deeds, practice, you know, the skills that we talk about in class. So it's a lot of fun, I love it. It's just an easy way to get families that information. And yes, it's on Zoom. And here we were talking about screens, right? 
but I did that deliberately because I want families to have access. You know, it's easy to log on from home. If you're traveling on the go, you can still access the information week to week. And then the other place that I like to direct people to is understood.org. Uh, again, I mentioned that earlier. They have a wonderful wealth of uh, information. You can sign up to um, see some of their expert chats. It's all free. And it's a website dedicated to help families learn how to help kids who have attention and learning differences. Gotcha. So it's understood.org and the other one was? Let's talk kidshealth.org. I'll make sure that's in the description too. Thank okay. you. And my practice is in New Jersey. It's at progressivepediatrics.com. If you'd like to call us, the number is there. If you'd like to email us, you can do that through progressivepediatrics.com. So we're hoping that was a helpful discussion and Dr. Bauer and I were, it's great to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you.